It's been here for a while, but most people haven't noticed it yet. It's like a calm spirit passing between us, but the world doesn't seem to pay attention to its presence. What's happening doesn't happen by chance. The Bible records important events that took place are happening now and will take place before we imagine it. The Word of God speaks of the appearance of two significant characters which indicate the beginning and end of times. The first emerging from the sea, with seven heads and ten horns, bears the name Antichrist. The second, who will rise from the ground and incline people to give the first honor, is a false prophet. I don't know if you know, but the book of Revelation was written by the Apostle John when he was imprisoned on Patmos Island in Greece. God showed him visions of things that were to happen in the last seven years before the return of Jesus and the end of time. Because God used symbols to convey his message, there are various interpretations of who can be an antichrist. Today we will delve into the figure that was both the object of fear and the source of misunderstandings, the symbol of deception and the sign of the final times, the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? Is it really already among us? Stay with me because now we will consider various theories about this existence which arouses fear and curiosity in people. Before we start, click the subscribe button, turn on the bell and choose the option all to receive further videos directly on your mobile phone. Do you believe in Antichrist? Who do you think he is? I want to explain that I will only show existing theories. In the end, I will tell you what I believe in, in relation to this person and what is its role in everything that is going wrong in today's times. The first theory, billionaire. Some people think that the Antichrist will be a very rich man who will use his money to manipulate and control the world. To better understand this idea, let's look at the book of Revelation chapter 13. This chapter talks about the Antichrist who is coming out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads. It turns out that from antiquity these symbols, horns and heads, were interpreted as representing various countries or sources of power, and he can control all these structures. Moreover, the Bible says that the beast will have power and will gain the admiration of all peoples and nations, which will make people worship him. The theory says that the Antichrist will have so much money that he will be able to change people's minds, control the media, and influence religious and political leaders. This will make the second beast, the false prophet, force people to accept the sign, without which they will not be able to buy or sell. Taking an important position in the world economy and using their resources to impose control over various aspects of society, ranging from politics to economics and technology. This theory can explain something we see today. When someone has a lot of money, he becomes famous and begins to influence society. Examples are Elon Musk, Tesla owner, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook owner, as well as Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. Do you know what these people have in common? They are very, very rich, they have great success, they are powerful and have a big impact on the whole world. They were accused of participating in apocalyptic plans such as the use of microchips on people, using their social media to control and influence many people and even maintaining a relationship with secret groups and even even, which shows that they want to control the world with their companies and space projects. I want to make it clear that there are no real evidence or confirmation of the Bible on these accusations. They are based on personal or uneducated interpretations of the history of the apocalypse. The second theory, political leader. This is another idea widely discussed by people studying the Bible. He talks about the Antichrist appearing as a very charismatic political leader who can unite nations and people under one government, his own government. This leader promises peace and happiness and resolves old conflicts between nations. This makes many people follow him, moving away from God. The idea is based on the biblical fragments, which we can find in the chapter 7 of Daniel's book, which describe how the Antichrist will present himself to the world. The Lord gave me this explanation. The fourth animal is the fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all other kingdoms and will conquer the whole of earth, shaking and tapping it. Ten horns are ten kings who will leave this kingdom. Another king will be created after them, who will be different than the first kings. He will be speaking words against the Most High. The saints will be put into his hands for time, times and half of the time. This explanation helps us better understand the prophecy of Daniel. The first part talks about the fourth kingdom, different from other kingdoms that will be very powerful and will rule over the whole world. It may be global governments led by Antichrist, an exceptional man distinguished from others by his ability to convince people about the occupation of the land, can symbolize the control of this leader over various nations, perhaps by gaining their military force or political tactics. The third part, which says that the Antichrist will speak against God, may mean that he wants people to honor him instead of God. 
the fourth part, which describes the oppression of the saints of God and changing the rules and laws, shows that those who will not follow the Antichrist and his rules will be treated very badly. This theory also suggests that some well-known politicians could be Antichrist, for example, John Kennedy and Mikhail Gorbachev, and recently the names of Vladimir Putin, Donald Trump, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and Biden. But it is important to remember that the Bible does not confirm this. Third theory, religious leader. This theory suggests that the Antichrist will be an influential religious leader capable of convincing other spiritual authorities to unite and create a new unified religion with a global reach. To gain everyone's trust, he will use miracles and other signs. He will present the world as such a spiritual being that it could be said by God himself. However, this is a visible impression from the knowledge of everyone, because it will be only a scam. This interpretation makes sense when we analyze the second part of the letter of the Apostle Paul to the members of the church in Thessalonica. Do not be deceived in any way, for he will not come until he has repented, and the man of sin, the son of the dead, will not appear. He appears against everything that is called God or the Holy Spirit, to sit in the temple of God, shouting himself for God. In this fragment, Paul spoke of the second coming of Christ and the day of the Lord. The apostle warned the Christians not to be fooled by false teachings, saying that this day has already come. According to the text of the apostle Paul, the first event will be repentance, that is, the departure from the faith in Christ. Paul predicted that there would be a great rebellion or rejection of the truth at the end of time. Defenders of this theory claim that it will happen under the influence of this religious leader who will proclaim himself God and will lead the nations to accept his new commandments, rejecting the commandments contained in the Bible. Then there will be a second event, which is the revelation of the man of sin, the son of the dead. Sanctity of this man will be so great that he will sit in the place of the Lord in the third temple in Jerusalem, which is already planned. He will do what the scriptures call a terrible sacrament, in which the name and holiness of God will be deeply valued by this leader. According to this chapter of the Apocalypse, the first beast will be a political and religious leader who will be wounded on the forehead and will be healed, leading people to give him honor. The second beast will be a false prophet who will perform miracles and miracles and miracles in the name of the first beast, ordering the making of its image to be worshiped. The followers of this theory believe that the first beast could be Pope John Paul II, who was shot at St. Peter's Square in 1981 and survived the attack. They believe that he will be raised from the dead and will appear as the Antichrist, the enemy of Christ and the Church. They also combine the second beast with a possible future pope, who would be a false prophet leading faithful to false miracles and inciting to give honor to the image of John Paul II. However, this theory about Pope John Paul II is not lasting because the Bible ensures us in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 9, that it is commanded to die once and then the judgment will be given to them. The former leader of the Catholic Church could not be an antichrist because the Lord does not allow anyone to return to life unless it is his will, as in the case of Lazarus and Jesus himself, the fourth theory, the creature from another world. This idea is based on incredible powers and supernatural abilities that the Bible assigns to the Antichrist and false prophet, which are abilities to perform amazing things, such as bringing fire from the sky or even bringing people back to life. However, it will not come from another planet, as in the movies, powerful beings capable of answering all the questions that have always intrigued people. Many people who recognize Christian religion believe in this. They rely on ancient Bible stories, such as those in the book of Genesis, which talk about meetings between people and beings from another world. For example, bad angels took on a human figure and had offspring with human daughters before the great flood. People would probably admire someone like that. Think, people always like to admire those who stand out in some way, whether it's through a lot of money, beauty, fame, or eloquence. Imagine how much everyone would admire such an unusual and wise creature. Imagine how he would attract attention, love and devotion to people, offering answers to questions. Where do we come from? And how to solve the difficult problems that cause so many conflicts and conflicts. In today's time, such an entity would certainly be considered as someone sent from heaven to bring peace and save us all. And that's exactly what evil always wanted. It is important to understand that the Bible warns us to be careful to be able to recognize the truth. I believe that the Antichrist will be a charismatic figure, able to unite allies to bring people together and force them to give honor. This individual will rise against God, standing above all, and will receive power from Satan to lead and rule over the world at the end of time. 
Nevertheless, the truth is that we do not know exactly who this person will be and when he will appear. Only God has knowledge of the right time and hour for these events. What can I confirm? That we can already feel the presence of the Antichrist spirit among us, subtly preparing humanity for its future revelation. This is not a coincidence that more and more people are abandoning the science of God and turning to temptations and depravities of the world. We observe the increase in crime, the expansion of corruption, armed conflicts, persecution and hate speech, all these signs of the progress of the Antichrist spirit. Therefore, it is important that we be aware of these signs and turn to the Word of God, because the end is closer than we imagine.